Ah, he's over with Washington. We haven't talked to you yet. Let's keep poking around. Good evening, gentlemen. Are we ready? The much awaited conference is about to begin? That is what we have all been waiting for. I believe that Lord Mortimer wishes to speak to you before it begins. You should go and see him. Are you quite sure, sir? Is there not a little mistake somewhere? I'm avoiding the obvious location as long as possible because anyone else might have something important for me. Why is this stuff just lying around? I'll keep it for later. I wonder if these are all meant to be people's secret stashes to deal with any... Any, like, stuff they need for their upcoming... Meeting. This really is everyone here, isn't it? Alright. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis, I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? In general, once a year, but in actual fact it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. I'm confused why Louis seems to almost not know this stuff, but also he says that this has always existed, which is like impossible on a conceptual level. Like, that's like a weird... In fact, everything they're saying is really like self-involved, like they're the entirety of all that matters and so on. Because like, sh before there's a there was a time before their culture and before their governments where there wouldn't have been such a, sp a specific organization and without and that accounts for most of human history but also like this is not a representative grouping of people for all of the world's governments like first of all everyone here is white like every single person here is white there's not a single person from like china or japan or india or any african countries or even uh, is, there, is, is there even a Russian in here? I mean, I'm sure that, that in some cases the exact named country I'm saying may have not been the same thing back then. But there are so many parts of the world that are not even represented here. It's just 
the far west, like white Europe and the and America and not even other parts of America. It's just the United States and which I which by I, which by the way, like I don't think when George Washington was in power, I don't think the United States could even be reasonably called like an, a superpower that would involve like the Illuminati. Like there are, there's got to be so many better countries to involve in this kind of thing than jo than George Washington's America. If you're talking about steering the entire world's uh, fate, and it's like really conceited and self-involved to act like this handful of countries is all the ones that matter. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. This is, uh, uh, somehow I don't think George Washington would be very psyched about this, uh, representation of his character as, like, meeting with a secret society to plot the American Revolution, specifically. I don't know. For me, the premise of these games is getting kind of iffy, and the conversations are getting a little silly in the, like, the directions of the story. It's weird. The first episode was super promising. The second episode was weirdly vacant on story and was just me tracking down my mother. And this one, once they're actually dealing with the secret society itself, I'm sort of like, Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Is kind of my response to a lot of it. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I would like to let you in on a secret before we begin, because I'm going to need your assistance. You see, the project I'm going to present concerns the territory of Louisiana in North America. It's currently Spanish territory, and I'm going to make the proposition to the Assembly for it to become French. So this game is... This meeting is about the Louisiana Purchase? But how does that concern me? Well, you see, I prepared this project with your mother. We began thinking about a crazy idea. Unfortunately, Sarah went missing before getting the bigger picture. I don't intend to stop at Louisiana. My idea is to increase the territory of the United States. The first stone of this vast project consists of getting Spain to cede Louisiana to France. Once it becomes French, France will hand it over to the United States, which will then allow them to double the size of their territory. And that's where you come in. France and the United States, hand in hand, two democracies illuminating the world. Yeah, two democracies that are secretly run by shadow organizations, apparently, kind of un like subverting the entire premise that it's the will of the people. Also, gotta really feel bad about the Native Americans right about now when we know that, that this... We're talking about what this, what's gonna happen to them in, like, real time now, and not, like, as a past tragedy. Like, that's the outcome of this kind of behavior. Uh... Mortimer, what do we know about you? He's immune to conviction in science. Difficulty and, and politics. I mean, sorry, politics and questioning. Uh, but why spread it over two phases? Why not announce the overall project immediately? Unfortunately, if Spain were to hear that the intention of all this is to allow the United States to grow, they would never sign. Manuel Godoy is perfectly aware of President Washington's appetite. If the United States took Louisiana, Godoy would know full well that he will have lost the entire North American continent. Things must take place in several stages. Otherwise, the change will be too brutal, and he will have no choice but to reject the project. Take a look at them. Apart from President Washington, they all belong to monarchies. Do you really think they won't resist? Of course they'll fight, fearful as they are of losing their precious privileges. But the world needs visionaries. 
like you, like your mother. It's a pity Sarah isn't here to see it. She only knew about a tiny part of the project. I hope I can count on you, Louis. It's time to start now. I must ask you to keep it to yourself for the time being. Take a seat, follow the discussions. We'll have an opportunity to catch up later, and you'll be able to let me know your thoughts. Blast it, Mother. You didn't know about everything. This project is commendable. Why tell me to beware? Could you have gotten it wrong? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. That makes no sense at all, my friend. My friends, I propose we get started. I feel like the mother's gonna burst into war and they're like, No, stop it! You're going to build the United States on, on, on Native American burial grounds. First of all, <laughs> I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet, who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur I hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly inefficient. Come, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The Order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about a King of Divine Blood, for goodness sake. It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale! Lord Mortimer! I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? But I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Duke Manuel, I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protégé. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? Let's review this character. What is going on with the soundtrack? It sounds like a comedy soundtrack. It's a little weird, right? It's Manuel Godoy. I don't know anything about him. Shit. Ah. Uh. 
Secretary of State and the head of the Spanish government, a favorite of King Charles IV of Spain, Godoy rapidly climbed the political ranks. Lover of Queen Marie Louis Bourbon of, of Parma, he attracted the envy of Spanish princes. As Secretary of State, he developed and strengthened the Spanish colonial empire, especially in the Americas. A close friend of Louis XVI, King of France, he worked hard for the king's liberation, but in vain. This served to fuel his resentment of the Republic, Republican gar, uh, government of France. Invited by Sir Gregory Holm, Godoy arrived at the Lord Mortimer's Manor with the firm intention of calming the expansionist desires of the United States of America on their continent. Yeah, literally his entire mission is to stop exactly what we're trying to do. So I'm not sure what kind of bizarre gymnastics we're going to jump through to make this work exactly. Um... Weird. But I think I want this. Some yeah, eyes immune to politics. I kind of thought that might be the case. If I were you, Senor Godoy, I would think twice before stirring up a scandal. I beg your pardon? Given the size of your colonies, you won't be able to keep them for long. A number of countries are eyeing them as we speak. The United States would have no trouble taking them. For all intents and purposes, you have no army in place. By wanting to keep everything, you risk losing it all, especially your colonies in South America, which are far more valuable to you. That is indeed the danger, Duke Manuel. If it comes to war over Louisiana, you will lose, and probably a good deal more than you now imagine. Young man, you are indeed a dark horse, aren't you? I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Ah, ah. What, what, is there anything else to look at? Am I imagining things, or does it look like Washington isn't aware of Mortimer's plan? Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? with this guy again. All right, so he's weak against science, if I remember correctly. His name is Giuseppe Piaggi, right? Got on the first try this time. Oh, he's vulnerable to manipulation. Wasn't he also vulnerable to science? Didn't science work on him? Or was he immune to science? I thought that came up before. I swear science came up with him before. So manipulation works on him. Politics, erudition. I don't know which one of these may or may not work on him. Shit. Your eminence, have no fear over that. I am sure France will do everything in its power to protect the Christians of Louisiana. My young friend, how can you come out with such a remark after the discussion we had on the evening of your arrival? If France was so respectful of worship, it would not be bleeding priests, as it is doing at this very moment in time. <sighs> Shit, he's immune to that exact thing. Well, well, that's how you learn that stuff. Now we know he's immune to rare edition, and this is why we check this stuff constantly, because that stuff will be there permanently for me to know about it. What did I just get, though? Exhausted. One, one unusable effort point. Is that what happens when you hit somebody? 
Right, I think that was established at the beginning of the game. If you hit what someone's immune to, you get exhausted. And when you're exhausted, then you lose an effort point, like, permanently. Not permanently, but, like, until you sleep again or something. Or maybe until you use somebody's weak spot against them or something. Uh, I think that was established early on, but I think I may have never encountered somebody's immunity before until now. I think I've always been able to avoid them. I could have there, too, but I'm a little worried about you wasting my Devil's Thorn. These guys talk for, like, two minutes straight whenever I say something. Like, I think that it almost feels like their dialogue is long to the, for the exact purpose of making sure that my Devil's Thorn is wasted and only can be used for one dialogue option, because it's time-based. And if, it, if they get to the next dialogue uh, before Devil's Thorn wears off, then I can use it on multiple ones, so I'm worried about running out. Don't be naive. This is politics. The Holy See must be concerned at seeing such a large territory falling into the hands of the French. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. I hope that you will teach this pretentious young man some manners, Sir Gregory. It looks like I won't be just making friends here. In any case, my lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich will say that Emily nie Preußen wird diese Vereinbarung akzeptieren. I assure you, Emily, the Prussian will never accept this agreement. Volner looks like he's set on ruining Mortimer's plan. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, William. These are great times. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Home, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces, and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory, I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? <laughs> Picking one side or the other. Who's with Mortimer? Is it just Washington? There's Giuseppe, Holm, guy whose name I never remember. Hmm. Where's Napoleon? I admittedly at some points mixed that guy up with Napoleon, but then his accent was so much different. I'm like, oh shit, that's not Napoleon, that's the other guy. A lot of... Ah. What does my mother want? She has some kind of plan or some kind of concern. Somebody here is the problem here. But like, she gave me not- I don't think she gave me the most reliable or useful information, did she? I hate home. <laughs> home really sucks. I hate looking at his stupid, stupid face. <laughs> like, goddamn. But some of the other characters here, I might be interested in being on the right side of? I think another issue here is I can't... I can't tell... I'm having trouble reading the social cue here of... One, like... On one level, like, what is my goal in this mission overall? I'm not actually super sure what I'm trying to accomplish here. But also... How nuanced is this choice? Like, am I choosing who to side with, or am I choosing who to go with for now? And maybe I could even be, like, infiltrating one or the other for the purpose of helping the opposite group or something. Or is it just me picking a side right here for once and for all? 
So everyone's just fucking staring at me, which is rather funny. Huh. I don't know, guys. Like, maybe I just lost the thread somewhere, but I feel like I'm kind of just picking a blind choice without not a lot of information of why my character should care one way or the other. Let's try it. Let's leave it. I think, I think I'll leave it with the others. Let's, uh, not overly associate ourselves strangely with, let's say, like almost like a teacher's pet situation. At the risk of displeasing you, my lord, I'd rather follow Sir Gregory. I don't think this is a place for the order. Louis? No! Let him go, Mr. President. Everyone is free to choose. I feel like I'm fucking things up. <laughs> Can he be so blind? If he keeps this up, he'll lead our countries to their destruction. Don't worry, we shall counter him, Sir Gregory. We have to act immediately. Calm down, Gregory. We only have to vote against his project, and that's it. They haven't got a chance. Just one vote will suffice. True. There is no chance of a unanimous vote. And he knows it. He must be preparing something else. What is he plotting? We shall shortly find out, so let's take the lead. What do you mean by that? His plan begins with Louisiana, which is still yours, Duke Manuel. He will begin with you. Expect to receive an envoy, French most probably. He will try to convince you by every possible means. Whatever he says, whatever he promises, you have just one response. It's war! If war is what you want, war is what you'll get, and on your own territory, in your homes. Enough games. Spain will join the coalition against France and declare war. You too, Duchess Hillsborough. You will speak to the Queen so that Great Britain commits to going to war with France. What do you expect from the Papal States, Sir Gregory? What do you think? That they hold a mass? They will go to war, of course. What is it that you didn't understand in what I just told you? We all declare war on France. Militarily, politically, and financially. And me, Sir Gregory? How can I help? Louis, you have won my trust. The order will have to act in France. But even before that, I'm going to need you. Right here and right now. Leave me now. I have to prepare for tomorrow. Let's meet early tomorrow morning for the next phase of the conference, which promises to be most exciting. Uh, Louis? I'd like to see you a moment, please. Thank you for siding with me today. I won't forget it. I'm going to need you. Help me counter Mortimer on his own ground. Right here. I'm sure he'll try and win some of you over. He needs our votes. Now, you leave that to me. In the meantime, I must ask you to go and see President Washington and persuade him to trust me and join us. They're, like, not even acknowledging the fact that, like, everyone's talking about declaring war on France, and in the middle of this whole group of people is the guy from France just standing there watching them just talk about declaring war on France. It may be in my best interest to defect from this group immediately. Do you really think that I'll be able to convince him? I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I have total faith in you. He likes you, and thus he won't see you coming. You must be careful, though. If he senses that you are trying to manipulate him, he'll dig in his heels. Louis, use every means at your disposal. If Washington drops Mortimer, his defeat will be complete. You should go right away. There's no time to lose. William already has a head start on us. Very well. I'll go right away. Oh, this is feeling odd. It says try to convince George Washington, so I don't... 
I don't think the game is that nuanced. Huh. I kind of thought you could pick one with one side or another just to see how things go and then actually potentially betray that group after they do after they reveal their plan and everything but now the game's just saying to convince George Washington so it's assuming that I'm completely involved on this side it's weird the whole, all that last episode was all building up to finding the mother but the mother didn't really give me the most concrete plan and trajectory to follow necessarily she just kind of warned me like, the whole conversation was her explaining to me that that the concept of a secret society as if we didn't all already know that going in. And now I'm like, I don't actually know what I'm trying to accomplish to some extent. And I'm a bit concerned about that. Because, uh, I might be making mistakes here. But does the order very specifically care about the Louisiana Purchase? I know it's talking about giving the territory to France. And we know what happens in real life, ultimately, and I don't know if that's gonna happen no matter what in this game or not, or what. I'm checking for, like, random items I may have not picked up before. Because I've come and gone a few times. Well, alright, let's make a mess of this.